Welcome to my show, Close Encounters of the Blurred Kind, Episode 5. This is a text I got after a ghosting and stand-up that happened. This was given about four days late. Sam, I'm so sorry that I went dark on you. It wasn't my intention, just that saying things like this is not easy for me. I really enjoyed the time we had. Thank you for sharing your beautiful heart. At the end of the day, I think that you were looking for Mr. Perfect. I'm far from Mr. Perfect. I have flaws and I'm well aware of them. You've reminded me that they still need work. I hope you find your Mr. Perfect because you deserve nothing less. So I have a poem that I have written in response to this whole situation that I'd like to share. <clears throat> you started so consistently showing so much interest in me, told me the things I wanted to hear, said that you loved that I seemed real. So I went after you like the tigress I am, my passion like wildfire of which you said you love and understand. You said you loved my beautiful smile and every photo of my profile. You said you loved that I seem so direct and very genuine. You said you loved so many things and so I let you in. Two puzzle pieces that fit when I wrapped myself next to you as we lay down in bed. You said I was made for you, told me not to question things when I was up inside my head. We both sighed synchronously after every time we kissed. It wasn't just me who said the pace was quick, yet seemed so organic. I treated you like a god and you called me a goddess on our second date. We both agreed to fall that fast, so let's make no mistake. You see, you failed to communicate your wants and needs, that you were accustomed to seeing your last girl only one weekend night of every week. You said you wanted something serious, but then all of a sudden you disappeared. Your texts were purposefully occasional and you started to seem weird. The first night you were supposed to stay, then at 1 a.m. your clothes were on and that didn't quite feel okay. All of a sudden you had all of these reasons about changing the plan from staying to leaving. You then said you wanted to see me but didn't want to solidify a time, then hit me up while talking to your homeboy on the other line, refusing to prioritize me so by the phone I had to wait, it was, if that was the way to treat a goddess, then I did not appreciate the way you spoke to me disrespectfully when I tried to address that something seemed wrong while you drove in the car and talked to me unkindly. The sweetness was all gone. You said you shouldn't have to text me, that we were committed, so I should just know. But we're building something together. You weren't investing, and so that's when I knew you had to go. You hurt my feelings, but you didn't care. And what mattered more is that you were unprepared to stay the night, even though it was the plan. You hadn't thought what it would feel like to be a woman in the middle of the night being left by her new man. What mattered more was all about you and validating my feelings was something you refused to do. And I got off the phone to be left alone, wondering where the man I was falling for had flown wondering who this new fool was and hoping he'd go away. Unfortunately, that fool was still operating the next day. The fool decided to not text me even though he knew I was hurt. So by 2.30 p.m., I decided to end things and uh, in a text that was rather curt. Four days later and myself, I second guessed I thought maybe the way I ended things by text wasn't for the best. I messaged him, he called me, and for three hours we did speak. We thought we would start all over, but perhaps reduce the speed. He asked me to dinner for two nights later on, but six days passed and like a ghost, he was simply gone. Four days after the proposed date, I finally got a text where he thanked me for sharing my beautiful heart and the rest I do protest, that I was looking for Mr. Perfect, that from far from perfect, he did fall. And so I deserve nothing less than that. And my being with him reminded him he needed to work on his flaws. 
I think about the potential life if he only gave me a chance. In a parallel world, I would become his wife and we would have a passionate romance. We'd have Thanksgiving where I would make all of the sides, he'd deep fry a turkey, and we'd go for a ride on his cruiser through the hills of South California, out through the desert into Sedona. We would cook dinner and kiss under the stars. I would teach him to play bass and the guitar. We'd sing together in our long car trips, hold hands and be very romantic. You were the oasis in my desert, but very much a mirage when it came to you and me your actions were that of sabotage. What I feared most came to pass. Our fling was brief and we simply didn't last. I have no regrets. What I felt was true. It wasn't because I was with anybody. It was because I liked and was with you. The puzzle piece moment forever is in my mind. When you held my hand as we lay together and we synchronously sighed. I wish I had more time with you. I wish that you could see. I wasn't looking for perfection, but just more investment from you in me. I needed you to prioritize, to really value me. I can't be something when you're done, like a pastime or a hobby. So thank you for the fireworks. Although our stint was quick, even though it's over, the brief moment was pure magic. And although you extinguished our flame, I can't deny our spark. My inner light continues to beam, even though you chose the dark. Thank you for letting me process. <laughs>